There we go. I am now recording. I got my things up. I need to make a checklist. It's like before, it's literally before I'm about to launch, like pun intended. I have like to have like eight screens up. All right, there we go. Yeah, so we are recording here. Um, yeah, welcome to class number three. Uh, if you have not noticed, I am not in my house. I look like I'm in like a Victorian uh, room right now. And I'm actually pretty sure that I'm in a haunted hotel. Um, this place like really gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like everything seems like from like Paranormal Act. No, that's a really scary movie. I don't know, something really scary. I'm not a big scary movie person. But I'm pretty sure I'm in a haunted hotel room right now. So why am I telling this? Uh, if I go glitchy, let me know. Um, I am on internet that I'm pretty much I'm sharing with the rest of Denver. So um, just let me know if I, I glitch out for any reason. I'll repeat what I just said. Um, so yeah. And then also, if you see like a figure behind me at any time, like reaching for me, like, I don't know, just let me know. Just tell me like, get out of the room or something, escape before the wall you starts saying right whatever. Now? Mm -mm. Right now? Oh, mm -mm. nice one, Matt. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> and we'll let you know, but it'll already be too late by that point. So That's true. At I mean, least you can tell point? people what happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. True. <laughs> with, with lag, you have no chance. <laughs> <laughs> that's so oh, true. yeah. That's, that's also true. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, one more thing. Come back. Okay. So we're just going to go into announcements. Uh, this week, there are no announcements. I kind of made just a small, quick announcement. Um, again, people are asking me about the exercises in studios, any kind of the solutions. Uh, those are all on the YouTube channel that I shared in the pinned messages within announcements. If you do not have that link, feel free to directly uh, message me. I'm happy to provide that link to you. Just let me know. Yeah. All right. So let's dive into it. I got to fix something real quick. Um, any pressing questions uh, before we start getting into lecture? Um, Feel free to share them on the lecture questions channel or directly message me. Um, I will try to include them into this lecture as we're going forward. So as we know from the beginning slide, um, we are going to be getting into classes today. But before we start doing that, we're going to just again always take a step back and just remember last week and all the happy fun things that we did. I didn't like that laugh. But actually, this might not be last week. This might be two weeks ago or two classes ago, we're going to do primitives and non-primitives. So if I have this variable here with int my dog's age equal to three. And with this int here, can someone tell me, is int primitive or non-primitive? Primitive. 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 What makes it primitive? How do we know it's primitive? Lowercase int. Very good. Lowercase i. So we know that int is primitive because it's a lowercase i. That means it is one of those building blocks of Java. Everything that we build, any class, any of those other things that are out there, all have to stem from this variable type, the primitives, ints, chars, C-H-A-R. Oh, gosh. Float, F-L-O-A-T. Yeah. All those, lowercase, that's going to be primitive. So then we move on to this one, string, my dog's name. We look at that string really closely. What is string? Mm. Non-primitive. Very good. It's non-primitive. It's non-primitive because it's one, a capital S. That, would, that means it's a class. It has things inside of it, things that can help us. And also it's made up of those primitives. A string with a capital S is made up of primitives, the char, C-H-A-R. A string is nothing but a set of multiple chars in, a, in an organized way. So now that we have this, we're going to move on. Let's get into the fun stuff here. We're going to create a class. Starting out, who can tell me what do we use first and foremost when we're creating a class? What keyword? Public. I like that. We public. can also do public. Very good. Yeah, actually public. And that's not what I actually was looking for, but I almost forgot. To, I basically forgot to put public in here. So that's a good call out. We should always be putting that public first in Java. The one I specifically was looking for too, also would have taken is class. To start in creating a class for whatever reason, if we want to create a private one or public one, regardless, when we create a class, we use the class keyword with a lowercase c. And then we name our class. When we name our class, it's going to be a capital letter. We always start our classes out with capital letters. In this case, we're going to be creating the class dog with that capital D. But again, calling me out for that, thank you very much. In the very beginning of this, we should definitely put public. 
public class dog. So everyone inside of our code base can access that. All right, so let's move on. We built a class here with dog. Now we have to remember three big things when we're creating the class. Classes consist of those three things. The first one being class variables, also referred to as properties. Class variables are something that the class holds deep and deep and most important to itself. So it's something that methods don't need to, or methods won't define inside of them, but maybe something that methods will use. Those are what class variables would be. The second one is constructors. Constructors are what create the instances of classes. Think of classes as a recipe card. It's simply just something maybe your grandmother or somebody else gave to you to like bake something. It's just a recipe card. You can't eat a recipe card. You can't use instances of a class without making instances. Maybe you can. Good call out. Touche. <laughs> but we can't create a class until we bake it, aka create an instance of it. So always think of a class as that recipe card. What we are what we are putting inside of this class to make later. How are we going to make this class? How are we going to construct it? Constructors are that tool that allow us to build those instances. So that's why we always have to have those constructors in them. Without that, we couldn't make instances. And then finally, methods. We have to let our classes do something. We have to run credit cards. We have to get information. We have to use our, we have to use information or mathematics or anything within these methods so we can make our classes actually do something. That's what methods do. So these are always going to be the three parts in this particular order, class variables at the top, instructors in the middle, and methods on the bottom. This is how you'll always see typical classes constructed. So moving on, let's talk about class variables. Now, remembering our previous, remembering our previous example at the very, uh, very beginning, we have our class variables at the top, and we're going to create my dog's age and my dog's name. When we place them in here as class variables, we're going to always use what key or what accessor type. What accessor type are we always going to use on class variables? Private. Very good. That private keyword. This is what we're always going to have on our class variables because we don't want them accessible outside of the class to other people to do things. And we'll talk about why specifically in a little bit. But let's look closer at this private keyword. We've seen it before, we've also seen public. But let's dive directly into what all of these mean. The first one we have that we just did on our class variables was private. Private, what does private mean to any of you? Someone tell me what private means to them. Who can access it? They can, they can only be accessed within that class. Absolutely right, very good. Private means this variable can only be accessed within the class. That means methods, as well as those constructors can easily access that class variable if it's private. However, another class external of it, outside of it, cannot access it. Moving forward, we have two other ones that we haven't really seen too much of in these lectures. Protected and then no modifier, meaning okay. there's nothing in front of that class. When we see this, who can tell me what this means to them? What does protected and private and no modifier mean? Mm -hmm. Let's elaborate a little bit. We I know mean, private no. is class. We know private is class only, and public means anyone can access it. So this means protected and those no modifiers is kind of in the in between. This particularly means classes and packages only can access if it's protected or has no modifier on it. That's the default, essentially. So that means any class within that class's package that has that protected class variable or the protected method can access it. That's where these packages really come into play. So if two classes are in the same package, they can access both public and protected methods and class variables or properties. Any questions about that? Because that one's a little tricky. That's a kind of a new concept to think about. You said it can only be accessed how? 
So if it's protected or has no modifier, it can be accessed by the class itself that it's defined in or another class within that same package. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll take a quick look at an example here in a second. Finally, public. We've all seen public. We know what public means. It means anyone or anything can access this class or this method when it's simply whenever it wants to within whatever package it's in. So if it's within the application and something's public inside of your class, it can be accessed. So these are our accessors within Java. This is what we'll see as we move forward. So we have our class variables here. We have our class dog. So let's go ahead and implement this real quick in IntelliJ. We're gonna come in here and this is exactly the same example we were using last lecture. We have my class, that second class. We are kind of doing hash maps and array examples here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new dog class. So I do new Java class, type in dog. And I got my fun dog class here. And again, complimenting you guys, you called me out properly for it. Public is always there because we want our classes public inside Java so people can use these. So at the first, at the top of every class, what do we start with? What do we put at the very top here? Class variables. Class variables, okay. very good. Sometimes main, that is also true. You can, if you put your main there, I do recommend putting it at the very, very top. Like we talked about, main might not always be in the class. So I won't always include main being at the top, but that's a great call out. If you do put a main, put it above the class variables. It'll be easier for you to find when you're moving forward. Right now though, we're gonna put class variables here. We said we we're gonna do private and we said int my dog's age and I'm not gonna set it to anything. Private string my dog's age or my dog's name because I need a name. There we go. We have two class variables. Awesome. However, so if I come over to my class and I believe there is a nice fat main in here, isn't there? Yes, there is, look at that. I'm gonna comment all this stuff out. Oh, I can't, you know what? We're just not gonna do that. Let me do my second class. Where are you complaining? Give me one second. Okay, don't know why that was there. We're gonna to go to my second class. There we go. We're gonna be just in here for a second. So, I'm gonna to come to my second class. And like we said, dog is public. So I am more than welcome to go in here and create an instance of our dog class. So I say dog, I'll just call it lowercase dog, or I'm gonna call it start, because I always like my dog mean start. New dog, and there we go. I created a new dog. But when I created start here, if we go back to dog, my dog's name and my dog's age is not being set to anything. We aren't actually creating a useful dog object when we're looking at this because if I say Stark and I try to get the name, I can't access it. If I try to even set the name, I can't do anything. I can't, I literally cannot do anything to this dog class. I, I'm base, it's basically useless to me. So defining class variables is our first step, but without more things in here, we can't really do much with this dog class. So, um, our protected modifiers and having them in the uh, Yes, Marcus, yes, that is correct. Protected, I yeah, protected is the default. So we can't do anything with this. So let's go back and let's explore one more thing we can do, or the next step, excuse me, while building our class. And that's gonna be constructors. So let's take a little bit closer look at constructors. So we're in our dog class. We always define our class variables at the top. And then next is our constructor. Now constructors are, have similar characteristics to methods, but they're not exactly the same. When we're creating a constructor, we need it to be public. And we always include the name of our class, exactly how it is, dog. What you're looking at here is just a simplistic constructor that's not taking in any parameters and not setting any of our class variables, not doing anything. It's just there, it's just chilling. So that being said, this constructor is building our dog object, but again, with nothing inside of it. And of course, again, make sure you really do see that public keyword. So let's keep going a little bit further and we'll see how 
we can make this dog constructor a little bit more useful. Oh, and then, excuse me, constructors create the instance of the class. So just remember that these constructors are, is what builds that instance that we're going to see here in our example. All right, so let's build a constructor that's actually gonna help us out. Now, before we do this one, remember our class variables that we have in our class already, my dog's name and my dog's age. They're at the top here. I just didn't have enough room in this example to put them in there. So just pretend that they're there, they are there. So just keep that in mind. This is how we can create a constructor doing that something a little bit more. Constructors can also take in parameters, kind of like, again, how methods do it. In this example that we're looking at, this dog class is taking in a dog's name as a parameter, as a string. There you go. This dog, uh, this dog constructor is taking a dog's name. What we're doing on the next line is that we're setting our class variable, my dog's name, equal to the parameter. What this is doing on this line is that it's setting our class variable to whatever our user of this dog class passes into our constructor. The second line, this dot my dog's age equals zero, means we're just setting a default, a default value to our class variable or property. They didn't pass in a dog's age, therefore I don't know what to set it to, so I just by default set it to zero. You could also set it to one, negative two, whatever. I set it to zero as a preference because I don't know what the dog's age is. So I'm just gonna assume that's not born yet. So let's go ahead real quick and implement this constructor in our example. So always we put constructor here. And then of course we do, is our, const or, sorry, are our constructors public, private, or protected? Who can tell me? Public. Public, very good. And I said, I'm gonna pass in my dog's name or a dog's name. Is there a reason why the constructor is always public? Yes, because if it was private, we could not access this constructor. We couldn't build a dog using a private constructor because the constructor is most likely used outside of the class, AKA here, when we're saying new in this dog. So we always need to set it to public so we can access these constructors to build an instance of a dog. So always make sure that they're public unless you truly have a reason to make it private. Okay. So real quick, let's finish this one up. I'm gonna use the, this keyword. Remember, we're gonna get into this a little, bit, uh, a little bit more down the lines, but remember that this helps us access those class variables and class methods. So I'm gonna say this dot my dog's age or my dog's name equals dog's name. And then I said that this dot my dog's age equals a zero. There we go. So we just created this constructor in there, no complaints, but I do see one related problem up here. Now remember our constructor within this dog class is utilized in other classes to build instances, to build those objects, those dog objects that we really, really wanna have because we want to have as many dogs as possible because dogs are awesome. Well, I personally think dogs are awesome. Everyone has their opinion. So this is where we're creating that dog instance, this dog object called Stark. But we see we're getting an error here. It says expected one argument, but found zero. If you see this error, it means that it needs more arguments within those parentheses. It needs arguments because that exact constructor or that exact method is asking for more parameters. So in here, what do I need to put to make this constructor happy? The dog's name. Very good, the dog's name, which we already called Stark. Because I don't remember if I said this, but I'm a huge Iron Man fan, big Iron Man fan. So Stark is my dream dog's name. So I put Stark in here. And what this does is that when I'm constructing this dog instance, this dog object, when I put Stark in here, it goes into my dog class it says, oh, dog's name was passed in as Stark. Cool, I'll create a new instance of this. Sets my class variable, my dog's name, to Stark, and then sets my dog age to zero, because I don't have that dog yet. Hasn't been born. So that's how we construct a class. That's how a constructor is utilized and called upon, kind of, in Java. 
So this being said, any questions kind of how constructors are working, how that information is being passed through here uh, that we can elaborate on? You right. don't need to have an import statement or anything for the second class just to use it? That is a good question. We do not have, have, have to have an import statement for dog because the dog is within the package of second class. If I was to create my second package and I will move my dog object over to my second package, if I remember how to do that real quick. Oh, come on. I can't read today. It's too much of a Monday. Cheers. Move class. Thank Sorry, you. Kim, dry it. What was that? Just drag it. Um, I like to do, so why I'm doing it this way is because IntelliJ wants to help me. If I drag it, I'm, that's kind of an unsafe way of moving around classes. You want to do a refactor in IntelliJ. That's going to be called a safe move because IntelliJ is going to check to see if dog is used anywhere in your code and is going to cause problems if you just move it there. So I want to do a refactor if I try to move classes around. So that's a really yeah, good call out there. Okay. No, no, go ahead, Matt. What's up? Well, I, I know on mine when you drag it somewhere else, it asks you if you want to refactor it or not. Yeah, okay. So that is probably a better thing in IntelliJ that they just enhance it. I had the uh, 07 version and it didn't do that. So uh, good call. Then dragging and dropping, if it does ask you to refactor, press yes. Um, I, I have not seen that feature yet. So I have to recommend that you right click and press refactor. However, if that's true and everyone finds that true, definitely use that way. As long as you see that word refactor to do it safely. Okay. Yeah, no, thank you for telling me that. I'm gonna try that next. Okay, so now I'm in here. So when I moved my dog class to my second package, then I had to import it. So it's kind of thinking like, is if my class and dog are in the same neighborhood, the same package, it's all fine and dandy. We don't have to say import or anything. But if it moves to another neighborhood or another package, then we're gonna have some problems. Then we need to import it and tell it where to go, which neighborhood to go into, which package to go into. Does that make more sense? Yes. Awesome. On cool. Second yeah. class on line 12, do you need to have dog's name Colin Stark or can it just be Stark? So I just, without the quotes? Uh, no, just when it says dog's name. Oh, yeah, I don't this, populate it that time. Yeah, that is actually. That's just uh, IntelliJ helping out. That's just, uh, yeah, okay. like, like I said, auto-populated. So it's just okay. there to tell me what it is. Got um, it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that might be a little confusing. Yeah, this is, I promise, guys, I did not type this. IntelliJ is Thank trying you. to throw you guys off. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, that is creating the constructor. Any other questions? These have been great questions so far. So we could still call the dog's age, even though we're not including, like, if you hadn't included included that in the constructor, you could still call it, right? So call it through the constructor, or call it from the Stark variable. Like, let's say we hadn't put age in the in the constructor and we just had name in there. Could we still call that age property? With you could only within the dog class, okay. because because my dog's age is what makes it unaccessible. Uh, private. Very good. Because we have that keyword there, private, we can't access it in my second class. I can't say Stark dot my dog's name. And I couldn't say Stark dot my dog's age. Because these are private variables, private class variables. We cannot access them in other classes. Got it. Okay, thanks. Yep. Awesome. Any other questions? Okay. So one more thing we can talk about constructors is that this is unlike JavaScript. In JavaScript, we were able to put in default parameters. We could choose whether or not we wanted to put those parameters in there as we built our constructors, as we, as we did our methods. That's not allowed in Java. So what Java uses to replace that kind of flexibility that JavaScript has is a thing called, or we're able to create multiple versions 
of a constructor. Therefore, I can create a second constructor here that says public dog, my dog's name and int dog's age as well. We can create two constructors with public dog with different types of parameters in there to allow our users of this dog class to have options. How do they want to build the dog class? Do they want to provide an age or do they not want to provide an age? We call this concept overloading. The ability to create multiple constructors or methods with the same name, but different parameters. Again, this offers our users of our class customize, uh, uh, the ability to customize how they construct the class. So, so before we that, go into, go ahead. Is that just chosen uh, by the um, arguments that you put into it? So Absolutely. like if I hold the dog's name, then it picks the first one by itself. And if I give it both, then it will pick the second one by itself. Very good. Absolutely. That's exactly how that works. Thank you. If I only supply a dog's name, the first one will execute. If I supply a dog's name and the dog's age, the second one will execute. Good call out. So Becca, as well. yeah, so Becca, so um, the question is, if you just want to give the dogs, the dog an age, but not a name, what would you do? That's a great question. What you do is just create a third constructor that only takes in an age. Remember those parameters, the things that go inside the parentheses have to be different. They can't be the same data type. I can't take, I can't create two constructors with two, <laughs> I can't create two con dog constructors that both take in strings. That's not allowed but I can create two constructors, one that takes in a string, a dog's name, and one constructor that only takes in a dog's age. I know I just spoke a lot of words there and I'm ranting. So let's just look at an example more instead of me just continuing to talk. Like I said, I haven't talked all day, so you guys are just getting the full force of it. And I apologize. So we said dog's name here and int dog's age. Not that I wanted it, computer. In this one, I'm gonna just copy this because again, I'm a lazy programmer. We put in dog's age, that corresponds to that one. And then I say dog's age here. And now I have that ability over here to say, all right, Stark, you're actually five years old. So now my dog's age is populated there. This is how we can use that overloading to help us construct and customize our dog object. Now let's dive it one level deeper. What if we just wanted to create the dog's age? Well, I would do public dog, and we only want to set the dog's age. So I just ask for the dog's age, int dog's age. Okay, this dot my dog's name. I'm going to say unknown. And I say this dot my dog's age equals dog's age. And there we go. Now we can just choose to say, hey, you're just gonna be five. You're, uh, maybe you're at the pound or something. No one knows your actual name, but we do know the age. Now the dog's age is just assigned, not the name. Great question. Oof. I got another question. Um, back to having the multiple constructors. Say you had, and this I guess didn't really apply for dogs, but first name, last name, and you had one that only took first name and one that only took last name. How does it know what variable or what uh, field to assign that to? That's a great question, and that's not actually allowed. I can't say, say we wanna have now an owner's name. We can't have two constructors with the same type of parameters. We can call our parameter whatever we want. It's what the data type is that matters. So we can't have two, uh, two constructors with the same um, parameter signature, essentially, like what the parameters are up here. If I have a string int string, I can't have a second constructor that has a string int string coming into it. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, that's what I was expecting. Thank you. OK, yeah, absolutely. Great question. That's weird. <laughs> Why do you find that weird? Hey, question. So, uh, what what's the solution for that? I mean, do you just add owner's name as a as a property for for dog, or I mean, like, I mean, what what would be the solution for that? 
Sure, for sure. So say <laughs> we're going to have a very proper dog. We're going to have that first name and then last name example. So I was a dog groomer for like 10 years. Like they all have last names too. <laughs> like, okay, okay. Bed, well, perfect. There we go. Everywhere you go that your dog goes without you, like it has a last name. <laughs> so all right. Well, then we put my dog's my, or my dog's last name then. There we go. Now we have a dog's last name. All right. So how are we going to do this? That's a great question. This dog, my last name equals last name. So let's go over to our constructors because I'm sure it's confused by now. Oh no, we're still in good doing things. So you said, what if it only has a last name? We don't know its first name. We know it's from the Smith family. Well, we can, oh, we can put in things that don't mean anything. In that case, we can provide a null here, which means nothing. I have nothing for you. It's kind of like undefined back in JavaScript days. JavaScript also had the concept of null, but we try to use a little bit less of it. In Java, null means nothing. I have nothing for you. And then we can provide the last name, Smith. So I just wanted to provide a last name and no first name. I could implement, or I could put a null inside of there. Now, I know we haven't talked about null so much, so don't let it scare you, but null just means nothing, the absence of anything. It's like a, it's like a black hole, it has nothing in it. It's no value. I gotta think of a better, a better way to explain that, but null just means nothing. <laughs> so null means nothing. I can't explain nothing well because it isn't anything. So does that kind of answer your question, how to get around that kind of situation? So no means like nothing. Uh, yeah, sorry. Use a no. no means nothing, but also holding a place. It means it means I'm going to pass a null into this parameter. That means when my or my constructor gets called, first name is null, which that means I set my dog's name to null, and last name has something, which is Smith. So I set my dog's last name to Smith. Null basically in this instance is saying I'm not going to set you to anything. So you can think of it as a placeholder, but think, don't think of it too much as those are places. Think of null being put into that area because there's no data to actually pass through. We don't have a first name. So if, if it helps, definitely think of it as a placeholder when you don't have any information in there, but also remember what null does. It sets whatever variables on the other side of that constructor to nothing, to null. Is there an advantage to making multiple constructors instead of having one fully built out constructor that uses null values instead? Um, there is, except that if you have just one gigantic uh, constructor and you always have to type in maybe 12 fields every single time, that would kind of get just annoying. If you, if you just want to create a student object or a dog object with just a name, but you still have to type in 12 different fields of just null, I promise you that gets just annoying as a developer. Yeah. Yeah. So constructors are good to kind of divvy it up. Right on. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. I'm wondering why line 23 is necessary. Do you have to have that line? Technically, no. I could just have it like that. Okay. What happens with this, to continue on that null, is that that means only dog's age gets set here. So this will be whatever I pass it in. My dog's age and my dog, or my dog's last name and my dog's name would remain as null. If I don't define anything, if I don't define a variable as anything in Java, its default value is null. Okay, and that's okay? That's completely fine. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's, Yeah, you. it's fine for a value to be null, as long as you know that, that, that there's a chance for it to be null. Um, yeah, we'll get into that a little bit more. I know we're diving into null a little bit too much here, so it's okay, it's okay for it to be null. It's okay for it to be null, we still accept it. Awesome questions, everybody. What else? Anything else on this? All righty. Um, okay, so let us continue here. On to, what do we do next? Oh, okay, so we have all this dog stuff and everything going on, but these constructors can kind of get like, pretty filled up. Like if we have to set everything to like a default value, like in the past one, I was setting my dog's age to zero if I didn't have it. That would be kind of annoying. Every single constructor I make, say I make eight constructors, I'd have to set that dog's age to zero as a default, every single one of them. 
that's just kind of just annoying and it's extra lines of code. And again, developers are lazy. So we like to do as little amount of coding as possible. To do that, how we can kind of clean up our constructors is implementing the super that implement or that passes information to other constructors. This super keyword is extremely helpful. It helps us pass to different kinds of constructors. So what does this exactly mean? What is a super and what is it kind of doing? Well, it's almost saying like inside of my constructor, pass data to another constructor to do what it does. Don't make me do the hard work, make someone else do the hard work. So let's take a closer look at that. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, oh, uh, and then I just saw that. Will null use memory? <laughs> Technically, yes. Null just means an absent. So when you define a variable, memory is allocated inside of your computer for it. So if I create my dog's name there, even though it doesn't have anything in it, the memory is still technically there waiting for a value to be assigned to it. So memory is allocated for these variables, but nothing is stored inside of its area. Um, therefore, it doesn't hold a reference. It doesn't hold anything like that. But technically, having a bunch of variables, I forgot exactly how, that's getting a little comp sci. I need to look that up to make sure I'm not blowing smoke here. It's a good question. I will get back to you on that. Now I'm being thrown for a loop now. I'll write that down. I forgot exactly what, how it goes. It doesn't hold a reference. Nulls don't hold references. So it doesn't use memory like that. Sorry, if, if anyone's not looking at the lecture questions, uh, a TA just threw me for a loop. Talk to you about that. That's awesome. Oh. I'm gonna write that down and get back to you. I'll post that answer I'm also in our general chat. I'm curious about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will look that up and see what's going on and I'll post that in the general chat just to see what's going on with that. Okay, um, so super. Like we said, oh, got a little off here on all this. Um, well, we'll do it down here. I wanted to not have to type in all these default things. Say we always need a first name and last name for a dog, just for whatever reason. It's just an example. We don't, but in this exercise, we are going to. We're going to say unknown here. And this dot, my dog's name is always going to be Stark. I always want it to be Stark. It's going to be Stark unknown. We want to maybe limit all of this conversation that's going on in this constructor. We just did three lines of code here. If we don't want to do that, we're going to do that super. And what we do is we provide inside of here to connect to another constructor. So in this case, I'm trying to see what we'd have to do. Oh, uh, we'll say this one. We need a constructor that takes in all those arguments. So I'm going to say int dog's age. So what we can do is the super asks for parameters to come in here so it can send information to another constructor. And it's again gonna look for that parameter signature. So we're gonna say, uh, okay, so I'm looking up here because I wanna pass all my data up to this constructor. The first thing we need is the first name. The first name we said is gonna be Stark. So I'm gonna put Stark here. Then we need the last name. So I'm gonna take that last name out there. And then my dog's age is just that parameter up here. So I'm gonna take that guy, put that there. And now I'm gonna just take out all of these things. I should have done this a little more for Oh, darn, darn, darn. I am getting way ahead of myself right now. I am getting totally ahead of myself and I completely apologize. Um, give me one second to clean this up. If you can tell, I am on a work trip and I did not get to proofread my stuff. Um, so give me one second on this guy. First name, okay. So the first name, Shark Smith, and then we have five. Okay, completely forget what I talked about super. We are not talking about super yet. That is not the correct chapter. So forget what you saw. You never saw any of that. I'm going to edit that out on this lecture too. Not really. I'll keep it all, all completely natural. Forget what you just saw about Super. I completely apologize. I am getting ahead of myself here into a few extra chapters. Um, do not worry about the Super. Just worry about overloading. Sorry about that. If anyone do, does have any questions about Super and is interested in what that word is, directly message me and I'm happy to explain it. We are 
a little ahead. Um, so we're going to go back to our slides and forget what we saw there. <laughs> and we're going to move on. Does anyone have any final questions about that? Any, any confusion about the overloading stuff uh, before we move on to the next portion? Can, can you revisit um, what overloading was? I kind of know, but I just want to... For sure. Confirmation. Overloading was to allow us the ability to customize how we build a class. So what do I mean by that? We have two constructors here. In JavaScript, this wasn't impossible. We couldn't have two constructors. We would get yelled at. In Java, it is possible. We can create two constructors, public dog and public dog, that take in different parameters. In this case, we're taking in a first name, last name, and dog's age. In this one, we're just taking in a dog's name and a dog's age. Overloading is simply just creating two constructors, dog, or two methods that are named the same with different parameters. That's what overloading is. Okay, thank you. Yes. Absolutely. Does it have to be a constructor? Like it could be any method that has just like the same? Absolutely, yes. Uh, oh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, looking at your question real quick. Is that it? I think, I, yeah, you might be correct, and that's what I'm getting thrown off on. I barely use this. Let's see. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I was like, what is going on? Why can I not think today? I'm having such a Monday brain. Thank you very much. Okay, let's end that real quick. I was like, there is definitely something there. If anyone has seen the lecture slides, I am, I am confusing super with the this keyword right now. And that is what my problem is. Again, we're gonna go into this a little bit more in depth next week, um, but I did wanna show it to you. But instead I ended up confusing everybody. So great. I'll take a good start. All right, now I wanted da, 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 da. Play from current slide. There we go. So everybody, pretending that we are just starting this slide off, what we want to do is use the this keyword, not super. Look at that. It's always been like that. Not the super keyword. Again, forget about super. I never said super. That doesn't exist right now. This does. So this allows us to pass to another constructor with those same exact per, uh, parameters. And Brownie points, thank you again so much for helping me out on that. Again, I'm having complete brain meltdown right now. Um, so it's the, this keyword. That being said, we go back over to this example. Like we had previously, we had super here, but now it's this. We use the this keyword to pass to another constructor. So this information is being passed from this constructor, we put in here, up to line 11 and passed into here. Now I know that was long-winded. And again, I completely apologize. Any questions about the this keyword here and how we're utilizing it? So why would you want to do that to pass from one constructor to another? What's the practical application? Absolutely, L limiting repetitive code is okay. one big thing. So if you have to, if a lot of constructors are again, creating those default values and we don't want that all the time, the this keyword, passing that information to another constructor very much limits how much code we have. Okay. So on line 23, wouldn't we put in dog's age instead of like an actual number there? Absolutely, yep. Very good. Because we are passing that parameter there. That was an oversight. Yes, thank you. We're passing in dog's age into this constructor. So we do want to input or put it into the this, uh, the this keyword here to pass it up to that constructor. Hey, so when you, you just had that five on there, it, the dog's age was already on there. So does that mean that it was gonna just reassign dog age to five? If I put five here, it wouldn't even utilize dog's age up here. So if I pass right, in 12 it would reassign, or anything. Right? Uh, it wouldn't reassign dog's age. It just wouldn't use it. To reassign dog's age, we'd have to say dog's age equals 12 or something like that. that this is reassigning. When I don't use it, it's simply, or since I didn't use it down here, it was just simply, never used it was it was never utilized 
So that that's kind of the difference there is that it's not being redefined. It's just not being used. But it's like right in front of the five though. Is it being like initially, initially initialized as five right there then? So what this word means before it is that it's just referring to the parameter name in the constructor that I'm passing it to. Say I put here cookie. Now you see line 23 changes to cookie. Again, it's that parameters name that IntelliJ is just kind of helping me out for and putting it okay. there for me. Thank you. Absolutely, great question. All right. If we don't have any more questions, I'm gonna move on here to methods. Uh, I, wanna make sure I have time. one yeah, question. Please. Yeah, please. Uh, you said uh, constructor cannot have two string at a time, but in the first constructor, we do have like first and last name. Can my won't allow me to pass? If I'm not wrong, like, did you say like it cannot have a two string or at a time? Yeah. It, it can't have the same exact parameter signature. We can't have two yeah. that take in the same oh. kind of parameters. We can't have two constructors that take in a string Ooh. Come on, tell J style. We can't have two constructors that take in string, string, and int. Oh. That's okay. what this that's what that means. You can absolutely take in multiple strings. It just can't can't have a second constructor that's exactly the same in the parameters. Oh, so it can't okay. have string, string, int. It can't have yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Okay, got it. Thank you. Absolutely. Anything else? I heard another comment. Oh, when I try to do the this constructor, it keeps defaulting to different parameters. Like it won't allow me to like, you know how when you start typing it, it for years it says this first name Stark and then last name Smith dog age. Like, mm -hmm. what do you do when IntelliJ just won't cooperate? <laughs> Uh, yeah, for sure. Well, that sounds like we'd have to take a little bit closer look at your code. So if you want, feel free to ask your TAs or um, you can send me the code directly and we can definitely take a look at that. Uh, any, other, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one odd question. You said that we can't have two constructors that have string, string, int. Can we have another constructor that's int, string, string? Absolutely. Yes. As long as the parameters in there are not in the same exact order. We can't have those data types in the same exact order on right. two param or on two different constructors. Excellent. Thank you. Absolutely. Great questions, everybody. Anything else? Wait, wait a minute. So what if we have the exact same arguments, but we just have them in a different order? Like what if it know what to pass? It's because of how you put your data types. So this is absolutely okay to do this. You can, you can definitely do this. That means that when you're constructing the dog class here, I want to use that constructor. I'd have to put the five over here. It's because how I passed in this information, I passed in an int, a five, a string, star, a string, smith. Int, string, string. When it comes over to the dog class, it says, oh, how did they pass it in? An int, string, string. Okay, okay, sounds good. I'll execute this constructor. Okay, cool. Awesome. Anything else, everybody? This has been a fun class. I like this one. All right. What time is it to you? I just want to make sure we're staying on time. Okay, so let's hop into methods here. So at the top, we always put our class variables. In this, uh, in this one, we've been having our my or my dog's age and my dog's name. Oh, and I need to do that. There we go. Next, we always do our constructors, which we just reviewed, and then our methods. The first type of methods we're going to talk about are getters and setters. Getters and setters are just like how they sound. They get class variables or our properties and return them to whoever's asking. And setters set that class variable to whatever we want to set it to. If someone outside the class wants to set our dog's name to something different, we have to allow them to do that. So we provide a setter. The first one we'll look at is that getter. The getter for just getting my dog's name here would be public, because I want someone to go and have and get that information outside this class. String, because I'm returning a string, the dog's name, and my, get my dog's name. A getter will always start with the word get, lowercase, of course. So get 
my class variable. That's typically how we write our getters. Get my dog's name. Then I do return this dot my dog's name. This is how we return our class variable. Now, I was approached by an example that someone found in 4.3.2.2 that getters weren't always written like this. The difference between that getter and that setter that I am showing in this example is the this keyword. It's always good practice that if we want to access our class variables or access our class methods that we use that this keyword. So naturally, I just put this here, but you might not see this in those examples. So I just wanted to call that out to everybody. However, you'll see in all of my examples writing the this keyword here. So I'm returning my class variable, this dot my dog's name. Any questions about this getter? All right, on to the setter. In this one, again, we need to take, oh gosh darn it. See what happens. This is the setter. When we set our class variables, we don't return anything. Therefore, we put void here. Public void set, use that say, uh, word set, S-E-T, my dog's name. We have to know what we're gonna set it to, so we take in that parameter, my, uh, dog's name, which is going to be a string. And then that next line, we use this dot, my dog's name, to get that class variable and reassign it to whatever was passed in as a parameter, in this case, dog's name. So that's what's going on in this setter. Any questions about this? All right. Well, easy enough. Let's go ahead real quick and implement this in IntelliJ. We always do our constructors there, and now we're going to do our getters and setters. Now, if I wanted to do, again, my dog's name, we do a public string because I want to return a string, get my dog's name. You'll see that IntelliJ will try to help you a little bit right here. And I say return this dot my dog's name. That's how we do our getter. The next thing we have to do is do our setter. So we say public. Do we return anything in a setter? No, you don't. So what do we put? Void. Void, very good. Void set my dog's name. Taking that string. And we say this dot my dog's name equals dog's name. So this is an example of a getter and setter. We typically have getters and setters for a majority of our class variables. Sometimes we don't. If we truly don't want this information to be outside of our class, we don't want to put it out outside of it. This would be credit card numbers. Um, you don't maybe want to set identifiers, IDs. If a dog has an ID on its, on its neck, it was given that at birth. You don't want to change it. So don't allow a setter for that ID. These would be some examples of why you would not want to allow access to some of the setters and or getters. Speaking more about that, we again don't allow direct access to our class variables. We have to allow the access and modification through these getters and setters. This concept is called encapsulation. We use these methods to essentially be gateways to our class variables. Again, those class variables are private. We get to choose who gets to access them and modify them. And we do that through those getters and setters. So this is a very big thing to just note on Java. So any questions about this? Uh, I have a question. Are getters and setters found in most classes then? Are they uh, a pretty frequent staple or are they a requirement? They are very standard in a majority of classes. Yes, you will see a lot of getters and setters, especially going forward in the assignments. So it is definitely commonplace for classes to have getters and setters. They're not required though. They are technically not required. Hello? They're technically not required, but we Hello? do need to have... Can you hear me? This is BJC calling to remind Jay that you have an appointment on. There we go. Okay, so getters and setters, uh, they are not required, but definitely recommended. 
have a good reason in your head why you're not going to put those getters and setters there. But you will see them in a majority of classes, especially the ones we build going forward. All right, uh, hopefully that answers your question a little bit. Um, any other questions on that or any more, anything else I need to elaborate on? Uh, I have one question. Yes. Okay. You said when we use get getter and setters, uh, we are encapsulating the private I mean, integers or variables. Uh, yes, you're encapsulating those variables. You're allowing access or modification, changing that variable to something. That's what encapsulation does. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just think of encapsulation, guys, everyone, as, the, as providing gateways to either set them or get them. They're gateways. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Any, any other questions? All right. Moving on. Let's go ahead and we just talked about getters and setters. Remember, getting that information. Let's talk about our other methods, basically anything else, miscellaneous, whatever else you want to do in there. Again, we're in a dog class here, so maybe a method that I would want to create in my dog class is to bark. That's how we would do it. We do public because we want to allow our dog to bark or people to call the dog to bark. Void. It doesn't return anything, so we say void. And then the name of our method, bark, with a lowercase b. Doesn't take any parameters in, so open and close parentheses, system.out.println bark. This is just a very simple, uh, simplistic example of a method that we can do. I see some people are typing, so I'll give them a few seconds to ask their questions. Um, well, actually, real quick, we have one more example here, so I'm going to do that. We have bark, but one more thing we could also do is another one is public void. We don't return anything. Celebrate birthday. In this case, we can access these class variables still within these methods. So here I'm incrementing my dog's age from this method. This is possible. You can definitely access these class variables other than within, uh, other than within those getters and setters as well as the constructor. So if you just want to increment your dog's age here, you can do that within celebrate birthday. Sometimes it is common and a good standard to use those getters and setters no matter what, wherever, wherever you might be inside of that class. So depending on, um, on your team standard and moving forward as well as what you read. Uh, this is one way you could do it, but you could also do it by accessing those getters and, uh, getters and setters within the class to update your dog's age or another class variable. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, so anybody else have any questions on that? Anybody have questions? Uh, well, I have a question. What is the main difference between constructor and method? For sure. A constructor builds the dog object. What do I mean by that? If Well, real quick, we'll implement that method. And I'll say bark. Public void bark. Let's dump that out. We do that. We go to my second class here. So the highlighted portion here is the constructor. Mm -hmm. We always have to call the constructor first to build Stark. Constructor goes first. We use a constructor to build Stark, to bake Stark, to make an instance of Stark. Methods mm -hmm. are utilized after the instance is created. Stark dot bark. If we never created Stark, we couldn't call bark. The class, or the in Stark, the instance of the object, or the instance of the class must be created first before, or yeah, before we, before we call to the methods. So uh -huh. methods cannot be called until the constructor is called first. Uh, okay. So any other questions about that? I have a question about getters and setters again. 
Yeah. Do we use those because we name our variables with private? Is that why? So we have to have a way to get to them? Exactly, yes. You just okay. define encapsulation. Okay. We can't access these things, so we need some way to do it. And therefore, we have to create those getters and setters to do that. Awesome. Yeah, you absolutely nailed it. Great, everybody. Any other questions on this? I have a follow-up question to that same, uh, the getter and setter. I guess I'm struggling with understanding it in practice. And have you already shown us an example of how someone would need to go to refer to that information that's private uh, and set it? I have not, and we can absolutely do that. So if we go to second class here, and we're going to say system.out.println. We'll, we'll get the variable first. So I'm going to get my dog's name, print it out, and then change it. String my the dog's name equals, we're going to call it Stark, dot get my dog's name. Remember, we're passing Stark in as the dog's name. Therefore, we should expect the dog's name to be Stark. So let's make sure. I'm gonna comment that out. I'm going to run, oh, ha, fun. Public static void main works. Second class. Okay, now we have a starting point. Perfect. Run. We printed out my dog's name, Stark. So we just accessed that information. We got that uh, information. Now let's set the information. We call the Stark dot set my dog's name. And then we say, we're going to call it Toby. I'm going to copy exactly this code up above here. One say is dog's name. And then change to run this. And now we have our dog's name start. And then we change it to Toby. This would be an example of how we access and modify information within a class. Does that kind of shed a little bit of light on that? It does, it, thank you. I guess so this just ensures then that you can't actually change anything in the way the class was originally constructed. That you can, ch I, mm -hmm. I'm struggling so, to understand how this is different and why it was necessary to make things private if we're just gonna go later change variables. For sure, absolutely, and that's a great thing to say, or that's a great thing to call out. What is the use of this? Again, those getters and setters are just gateways, and sometimes we don't want to allow access to change or get something. In that case, maybe I don't want you to set my dog's name, so I don't allow you to change my dog's name once I set it. So we go back up here, and now we're getting this error here because we don't allow it to change. So what these getters and setters do is that if they're both there, you can set and get that information without any trouble. But what if you don't want them to change the information? What if you don't want them to get the information? Then we don't provide those getters and setters. We don't provide the gateways. Okay, okay, that, that helps, thank you. Absolutely. So I think my question would be then, if why would you just make it, so if you're gonna set things to private, then why make gateways to allow people in? If you did, why wouldn't you just make it public instead? If you're gonna allow people to access it. For sure. It's just because it's really just not a good job. It's just not the Java standard to do that. You okay. wanna always make your class, yeah, it's really a big standard. Uh, when, it, when we really get down to the depths of it, it's honestly just standard not to make class variables public. You wanna access them through a method and set them through a method. There's definitely some more benefits to it too that we haven't really discussed yet because we haven't gotten that deep into it. But I promise you, this is a better way of doing it than just setting those uh, variables to public. So take a little bit on faith. 
this time. But uh, yeah. Awesome. Any other questions on this? All right. That being the case, everybody, when we are we are absolutely finished with this one, this round. This was classes. How we create them, how we create instances using those constructors, and how we create methods to do things inside of our class, such as get and set information, or maybe just let our dog bark. So overall, this is what I had for you today. Um, any questions? Uh, again, as I said, but we've had great questions here. Again, sorry for the super mix up there with the, this keyword. Uh, remember, this is what we need to do, not super, but you forgot the I. No, it's the new way I spell it. It's, um, it's Kyle Latin for finished. <laughs> I, like I said, I apologize, everybody. It has been a heck of a week on my end, which everyone's busy here, so it's definitely not an excuse, but I'm sorry for not proofreading these slides beforehand. This is definitely not the norm. Um, I don't like to do this. Um, <laughs> we're just Josh and you guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good, good. Please, Josh. I cannot apologize enough, though. I do not like when I'm not prepared. So as oh, you see, hi. I'm in a haunted Victorian-style hotel, not in the best situation. <laughs> um, <laughs> struggling on super in this. Blame no. the ghost. I blame this, the ghost. Yeah, that's what it was. This group will just give you a little trouble. Catch it. No, that's you fine. I'm happy with it. <laughs> Go stealing bowels. I love it. Oh, uh, no, but you. Oh, great. Well, behind you. <laughs> don't even trick me in that. I honestly am. Like, even the, even the curtains here are scary. Okay? Like, everything. I watch way too much Travel Channel to, watch, to, to be in that kind of hotel, man. They, it, it was, it was oh, honestly, I, I, I am the exact same way. I watch those shows sometimes, and the second I walked in here, I was like, wow, I'm not leaving. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well you guys have all everyone's been great here uh again thanks for putting up with all that but um if i did confuse anyone please just reach out to me i'm happy to just straighten things out here um if you do need more elaboration again feel free to book time with me um drop me message me thank you to the people who have messaged me directly um again i was out of town um clearly still um all up until Sunday doing things. So I was kind of a little bit slower to getting back to, um, to some people, but thank you for reaching out. Um, I really do like helping out as, with as many questions as I possibly can. Uh, that being said, uh, any last minute things before I let everyone into, or just let everyone go into their breakout rooms and enjoy the studio? No, thank you. Absolutely. Well, I'll Thanks be sticking around a little bit on this Zoom call. If anyone wants to uh, stay after and just ask me a quick question. Other than that, have a great Monday. Enjoy your studio. Have a great week. And we'll pick up on Thursday. All right, that, buddy. Take care. Instead of saying the night, right. we'll say boo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Kyle. Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Curtis. Have a great one. Um, Curtis, if that didn't answer your question about the fourth chapter, just let me know. Cool. Well, okay. I thought Thursday was a work day. It might be. <laughs> I'll put out an announcement if it's a work week. I, I think it was after looking into the, let's see. Let's see. Or it is, it was wiggled right in there. Dang it. Okay. Yeah, I'll put out an announcement about that. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the call out. Mm -hmm.